sometimes even the most familiar places can hide some frightening surprises. As one daring youngster discovered on the afternoon of May 3rd, 1992, at his home in Columbia, South Carolina. As a mother, I've always been concerned about standard accidents like running with a sharp object or leaping off a swing and breaking an arm. But I think you really have to have a good imagination to keep up with uh, what's really going to happen because you, you can't predict it. One, two, As she had many times before, Rainy Neifert was babysitting her seven-year-old nephew, John, and his two younger sisters. We were just playing around, playing hide and seek, and Rainy was counting. Fifty-eight, fifty-nine, sixty, sixty-one, sixty-two. I'm hiding here. Eighty, eighty-one, eighty-two, eighty-three. I decided I could just hide in that little cabinet where all the laundry goes. Nine, four, nine, five, nine, six. Oh, what's happened? John says, Rini, I need help. Come quick. Rini, help! Oh, my goodness, John Henry, what's the matter? I'm stuck. John Henry? He said to try to pull him out, and I kept trying to pull him out, and it seemed like when I was doing it, he was getting further down. Ah! She said, oh, John. And then she realized she had a problem. So Rini placed an urgent call to John's grandmother, Irene Neifer, who lived just a few blocks away. Well, I thought I was going to come over here between Rini and me. We were going to get him out. John! Please, get me out of here! Well, I'm going to try, darling. How'd you do it? I don't know. John Henry Neifer, how in the world did you get down here? Oh. Rini and Katie went and got me a, a saw and a hammer and a screwdriver. I'm going to saw a little bit, okay? When I attempted to saw the vibration of it hurt him. Oh, does that hurt your head, darling? Yes. Oh, Lord of mercy. I'm sorry, darling. But well, what in the world am I going to do, John? He said, oh, me, Ma, just call 911. Bless your heart. Why didn't I think of that? Central, what's your emergency? I got a beauty, darling. What's wrong, ma'am? My grandson, they just called me to come over here. Uh -huh. They went hide and seek, and he got in the laundry chute, and he's caught in it. We're on the way. Thank you, dear. Attention, engine nine, rescue one, battalion one. He said, Mima, do you think I'm going to die? And I said, of course you're not going to die. And you didn't have any business getting in here anyhow. And he said, Mima, that's the third time you've told me that already. When the Columbia Fire Department arrived, John had been stuck in the laundry chute for nearly an hour. I bet you won't ever do this again, will you? Get out here. Let's get a ham stick you got to get this do, okay? Removing a child from a 6 by 12 inch laundry chute was not something that Captain Rusty Smith's men had trained for at the academy. Chief Orney and Farmer Jones was in the process of talking to him. He was very upset. He was scared that he was slipping. Kind of got him wedged in here. And it was just unreal how he got in that situation like that and how he could get up in that little hole and not get back out. While firemen sized up the situation, additional help arrived. Don't try to hold your feet, okay? All right, Johnny. You hurt I was saying to myself, I'm going to be stuck here forever. EMS is on his way. I said I didn't want to die younger than Elvis. Richland County EMT Grant Freeman and paramedic yeah. Britt Ogden tried to comfort the boy. Hey, little man. Hey. How you doing? Not so good. Are you hurting anywhere? Yeah, he was calm, yeah. but in the same sense, he was scared. John, Basically, our main concern was his airway and respirations. John, my name's Spike. 
Just a little bit of cold air, okay? It's oxygen. They did a marvelous job of pacifying John by talking to him. There's the jail. The defibrillation jail. That's a real slick substance. And we just tried to get him very slick. Ask him to exhale one time, hoping that maybe that would decrease his body size, upper body size, enough that we could slide him on out. All right, here we go. One, two, three. Okay, you got him up there? You got to keep your feet still for me, Don. He was stuck. He was not going down. He was not going up. There you go. Hold on to your hands a little bit, okay? He would cry every now and then. Okay. Mainly what scared him a lot is when he heard us start tearing out stuff, it kind of upset him. Turn, then, turn. So we're going to go downstairs and grab him since they pulled him out. Right. Got him. Okay, John, buddy. You're doing good. Ow, ow. It took a good while to get him out. <laughs> Let's go ahead and let's try to take it. With a small child and that potential for injury, you have to take a lot of time and be real careful. I got it. I got it. Watch your feet. John, they got you, honey. Okay, here he comes. After two hours in the laundry chute, John was finally free. His color wasn't the best in the world. I think he was scared more than anything else. That's his fine. Bring him down. Don't want to take any chances, even though he said he wasn't hurting anywhere. I said, all I thought I needed was time on and go to bed. He was kind of afraid that he was going to get in trouble. And I assured him, you know, that your parents are going to just be glad to see that you're okay. You know, that you're not hurt. Then they rode me off in this noisy ambulance. Going like, blah, blah, blah. Real noisy. John escaped with just a few scratches. But damages to the house total more than $1,200. Within two weeks, the only remaining after effect for John was the lesson he'd learned. Don't go into small places with walls around it where you'll get stuck. He'll play hide and go seek again, but I don't think he'll hide in the laundry chute anymore. <laughs> I want to thank all the firemen. And there's one named Spike that I want to thank. And I want to thank all the rest. And I want to thank the EPS men. E-E-M-S. John Henry, he's the pick of the litter. I told his father that, and John overheard me say it. And once when, when my son Francis was reprimanding John, he said, be careful what you say about me, Daddy, because you know Mima said I was the pick of the litter. <laughs> but they all are. They are. They're darlings. Come in, come in.